Welcome back from lunch, everybody. How was that brown bag? Yeah, super good. Okay, so if you're here this morning uh, for the first session, this is kind of a repeat, but you know, was anybody here for the 9 a.m. session? Just a handful? Oh, sweet. So the awesome. room Fresh is rotating. Perspectives. Nice. Okay, so this is Project Lightning Talks, and we are going to kick it off with a Hitchhiker's Guide to the CNCF Landscape. But, okay, how many of you, it's your first KubeCon? Wow. Wow, that's amazing. How many of you are maintainers of projects? Okay, okay. But contributors. Who here loves Kubernetes? Okay, cool, thanks. How many of you have um, your company that you work for is a member of the CNCF? How many of you know that? Awesome. awesome. Just keep in mind, part of your CNCF membership uh, is access to training. So if you're like, what do you mean training? Go talk to whoever is the maintainer of your membership and find out how many credits you have and what you can do to make sure that you get to level up while you're at home as you level up while you're here. Yeah? Yep, I love it. Free okay. training. Ready to go? Yep, we're ready. Let's do this. Do it. We are here to be your guides. Yeah. So my name is Lori LaRusso. I am the head of community at Percona. Um, this is me and my daughter. We were on a flight home. She is a little bougie little one. Um, she always seems to get upgraded no matter what flight we're on. And no, that is not a mimosa, although she'd like it to be. Um, just kidding, I mean, she's nine. Uh, so yeah, so um, you can, I'm a CNCF ambassador, CDF ambassador. I do a lot of stuff with OpenSSF, so like all the foundations. Um, you can find me on any one of these social media platforms, the one that shall not be named, uh, LinkedIn, that is a QR code to my LinkedIn profile, please link in with me, let's build our networks together, and then Blue Sky. Hey, I am Catherine Druckmann, I am an open source evangelist at Intel, and I, in addition to that, I am also the co-chair of the OpenSSF, Open Source Security Foundation, DevRel community. Uh, and Marketing Advisory Council. I am also recently taking a lead on the Open Platform for Enterprise AI Security Working Group. So if that's something interesting to you, I would love for you to join me on that. Uh, and then, of course, I am, I am also what I like to call a, re a recovering engineer. I used to spend all of my time in an IDE, as I'm sure many of you do, and now I get to talk to the humans. They let me out. Um, yeah, and you can find me at the, the, the places, the usuals and elsewhere. Okay. So here's a little agenda. So we're going to do a brief overview of the CNCF, uh, why the landscape is important, how to use the landscape, and we're going to tell you about some awesome projects you might not know about and what's next. But the whole reason we created this presentation was there's nothing more frustrating to us than when you're looking for, for information and someone tells you, hey, just go to the website. Like, how many of you have been in that situation where you're like, hey, I really need help, can you help me with this? And they're like, yeah, just go to the website. Anyone, does that resonate with anyone? Yeah, we got some hands? Okay, so basically that is what the premise of this talk is. Like, we don't want you just to go to the website, we want you to be prepared on how to use the website so that you get the most out of it. So, let's start from the beginning. So, the Linux Foundation manages the CNCF. One of the things that you want to note is that the Linux Foundation has 900 open source projects underneath it. So we've got 3 million developers that are trained, again, training credits, look out for those. Um, 777,000 developers contributing code. There's 17,000 contributing organizations and a bunch of events upcoming. But where did we get our start? What put us on the map? Kubernetes. Now, if someone say, go to the website, and the only thing on the website was Kubernetes, well, then you might have a lot easier time of finding what you're looking for. But here's, here's the kicker. There's 208 projects at the CNCF. So when I said there's 900 underneath the Linux Foundation umbrella, 200 of those belong in the cloud native space. So if our mission is to make cloud native computing ubiquitous, well guess what, we keep adding projects to make it that much easier and that much more clear to everyone. What, what is the CNCF landscape? Does everybody know what the CNCF landscape is? Landscape.cncf.io. Has anyone not ever seen the CNCF landscape? Sweet. Okay, cool. 
So many years ago, in the olden days, uh, when there were fewer projects under the CNCF umbrella, the landscape used to look like this. It was really handy, right? It's organized into different pockets where, you know, based on functionality, depending on what you might need. It might not be too difficult to go check these out and put together a little deployment pipeline and get your apps out the door, and it's great. But today, with all of this just massive growth over the last, oh, almost 10 years, uh, we ended up with this, and this is actually a vast improvement. I don't know if you, if you happen to look at it a few years ago, it might have been even more overwhelming, but this is what we'd like to, uh, to dive deep into today. And I wanted to ask another thing. Has anybody gone to the landscape and had your eyes kind of glaze over? Because it's a bit overwhelming and you just don't know where to start in, in terms of evaluating projects or even getting help on the ones you're already using. Does that resonate, anyone? Okay. Come on. So what Lori's doing is we're going to pull go. it up and we're going to walk you through it a little bit as your safari guides. So when someone says go to the la go to the website or go check out the CNCF landscape and this is what you see, I mean, logos are nice and all. But I can barely see them. <laughs> WTF, right? Like there is so many different categories, topics, and then you're like, wait, I thought this was a CNCF landscape. Why are there like companies in there that aren't projects. Like, how does yeah. this work? Why is there all this stuff under one umbrella? Well, we can thank our boy George, who, where did he just go? George just, oh, George, George is still George. here. So Thanks, George, George for organizing it. cleaned up and, like, made this much more clear to use, and that's what we're going to go through today. So one of the things it's like, okay, I just want to look at projects, right? I'm not interested in companies. I want to look at the CNCF projects. So you just hit this beautiful pink filter button. And you've got a bunch of different ways that you can start filtering out your search. But we're going to go super high level, and we just want CNCF projects. Now, CNCF projects have different levels. Um, there's archive, meaning those projects tried but did not pass the muster. And we all know what that's like. Um, we've got graduated projects. Graduated projects are, of course, the ones that have been around a long time, probably used in production quite a bit. They're definitely stable, have solid communities around them. Then we have incubating, so that's probably like where most of the projects that you might know about are. They're in that stage where they still need maintainers, Fairly contributors. Fairly stable. Fairly yeah. stable, but still trying to get to that graduated yeah. stage. And then lastly, we have sandbox. Sandbox projects have either recently been added or have not yet met the requirements to graduate or to advance to uh, the incubating project stage. So how many of you work on sandbox projects? Okay. okay. How many of you are working with incubated projects? Okay. And how many graduated? You yeah. all are, right? Because you all are, right? And Kubernetes. Kubernetes and okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Understood. Okay. So let's go ahead and apply. So right off the bat, it becomes a lot clearer to see what is what, right? So like everything is defined by a header, application definition, image build is the top, then we've got continuous integration and delivery. Um, the size of the logos denote the size of like where the project is. Um, so let's dig in. Let's go to Helm. So we're gonna go ahead and dig into a project and show you a little bit more about what the landscape can tell you about a project when you're looking to see if this is something you wanna add into your infrastructure. So the Helm project, I, it's fairly ubiquitous at this point. I, I have to say, this is, I have a soft spot in my heart for the Helm project because it was part of a suite of cloud native uh, projects that I used in my own work every day. And I'm sure many of you are in the same boat. Helm is at an interesting inflection point, right? We're gearing up for Helm 4. We're going to transition from Helm 3 to Helm 4 soon. And now is a fantastic time if you depend on the Helm project to get involved. If we look through, if we can scroll down a little bit, uh, the landscape interface gives you a lot of status information, a lot of data about every project listed. And every time, if you look in the Clo Monitor dashboard here, if you'll scroll down, you'll see you'll see a lot of values, and I don't want anybody to get hung up too much on numerical values, because these things, again, we're all in this together, and 
we're providing you with a lot of information to empower you to kind of make your own decisions about which projects are right for you. And here, again, we've given a tremendous amount. And any time you see something that's missing, where you see, for example, a red X, which isn't maybe up to 100% health in terms of project health, that is an opportunity right there. That's an opportunity to get involved in the sustainability and success of projects that you rely on. So this is a question I asked earlier today. Like, how many of you are interested in security? OK. How many of you are forced to be interested in security because everyone has to shift left? OK. <laughs> so when we're looking at the Helm, the Helm project, one of the things we notice is there's red X's next to software bill of materials, security insights, and their dependencies policy. So this is something that could start a conversation with you with the maintainers to see, hey, what's going on there? Um, it's an opportunity for you to say, hey, I'm really into S-bombs. Like, can I help take this up to the next level? Um, but everything, as Catherine's saying, like, just because it's got a red X or doesn't have 100% um, in the numerical value of uh, success doesn't mean it's a negative. It means it's an opportunity. Yeah. We also want to make sure you check out some of the, like what I call the unsung heroes, right? There are a lot of sandbox projects that have a lot of promise. And to help them realize that promise, they could use contributors like all of you to get to that next stage. What do you want? Tinkerbell? Yeah. Let's look at Tinkerbell. It's a great name, right? There, Peter Pan was just here, just yeah, so you know, if right, you went yeah. to the Broadway play. <laughs> it was interesting. So you can see, again, I, again, we don't like to get too bogged down in numbers, but you will see that the score is a little bit different, or the, the summary information. You'll see the, the project is in a different stage than something like Helm, for, for good reason. But again, all of these are opportunities to jump in and help out a fledgling project, especially if it helps meet your own needs. And this is something, again, that you'll want to determine for yourself. So again, there's plenty of ways to filter through the, the landscape to make it more unique to what you're looking for. So since I keep saying security, let's just go ahead and filter by security, and there you go. Now you know the CNCF projects and whatever stages they're in, these are all the security projects. So if you are like, you know, hell bent on doing a security project that is underneath the CNCF for whatever reason, this is a great place to start. But again, when you go to the filters, you can also look at non CNCF projects. So it's up to you, right, what you want to look at. And then this really cool feature here that exists, so if you're like, okay, this is great, but like all the logos are making my eyes bleed, I don't have time to click through everything, I just need like some quick and dirty information, you can go ahead and download quick information like from the projects, and one of the things, again, not to be super security focused. No, let's all be super security focused, <laughs> it's the best way to be. <laughs> one of the, the, the last columns is when they had their last security audit. Right, so if you're with a company that's maybe very heavily, uh, has to follow a lot of compliance issues, you're in banking, you're in finance, you're in something like that, healthcare, you can go and see when the last time this project had a security audit. And again, if this is a project that you're like, this could be critical for our infrastructure, this can open up a conversation. Like why, like when was the last time you had a security audit? Like where is that going? Is there something we can help you with? Is it a, do you need a maintainer? Is it a contributor? Like yeah. what can we do? So again, it's not like, what can they do for you? It's what can we do together? Yeah. What can we do together? And one of those things is attend the project pavilion, meet the maintainers, start conversations, start conversations with each other, get involved, be your own hero, and we're here to help. So you can find me at the, at the Intel booth, you can find Lori probably at the Percona booth or around the, the event with, uh, with our hats on. So. But one of the things I also want to say before we leave you is we just mentioned a bunch of places for you to look for technical information, but there's a ton of non-technical opportunities baked into KubeCon because as we all know, KubeCon is a marathon. It's not a sprint. Some of us started at Cloud Rejects on Sunday, so we're already like full on into this, this whole show. And Maya Angelou said, I've learned that people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. And this to me is the key thing to think about when you're trying to network, when you're trying to find those projects, those people, those maintainers to really work with. So go get a chair massage. Go to the oxygen bar. Talk to the people that are in line with you. Um, if you like running, there's two run groups, one on Wednesday, one on Friday morning. That's a great time. And then, of course, my favorite would be pet a pup. So if you have a dog, how many of you have animals at home? Okay, like go to Pet a Pup, show a picture of your, of your dog. You never know what that's gonna lead to. And so here's our information. 
We're gonna cut it because George has given us the ax to get off the stage, but enjoy Thank you the all. rest of the lightning talks. Project and Pavilion. Yeah, enjoy your rest of your KubeCon. Jump in and do the thing.